right, guys, it's just a quick spot on this Jackson safety um, grinding helmet and face shield more like. And the reason I bought this, I mean, I've used a grinder for 20 something years. A lot of you guys have used them for longer. Um, use them all, some of you guys use them every day, but um, I've cut a lot of corners and I have had a couple near misses. Um, and it's kind of scary when you think about what can happen. What really forced me to buy this, um, inspired me to buy it, I should say, is a video by Weld.com. I'll put a link at the end, and I encourage, I encourage you to watch it. It's kind of long, but it's so worth watching. And at the end of the video, he shows a collage of pictures of people's injuries, like graphic injuries of people missing fingers and stuff like that from grind, grinder injuries. Um, pieces of grinder disc embedded in their forehead. I mean, it's just crazy crap like that. And, and I almost wish he'd put that at the beginning to motivate people to watch it all the way, watch this video all the way through. But if you do watch it all the way through, watch it to the end where those um, pictures are. And it's 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 mind-boggling. I don't ever want to use a grinder without full gloves and full face protection and a jacket, something decently heavy like this. Uh, and I'll tell you, man, I. Over the years, I've used a grinder. You know, I've closed my eyes and just turned my head to the side while I just r hit something that I need to knock off just for a second. Didn't put eye protection on. I can tell you story after story. Maybe you've done the same thing. Um, this video has changed my totally changed my thinking on it. And uh, so I bought this. This is 20 bucks on Amazon. I think 21 bucks. And I don't know. There was a couple different brands. Um, Uvex, I think, was one also that I almost bought. Um, I have some Jackson safety glasses already, safety glasses, so I like them, um, and so that's just why I bought this. Anyway, looks like it's really nicely adjustable, like right there, and I have a pretty big head. I have a seven and five eighths, seven and three quarter head, so um, this actually goes much bigger than my head, so that I can wear a welding cap or maybe even a something thicker underneath it and still get this on comfortably. And it ratchets down. Look how far it ratchets down. So that's a, that's a big diff that's a big change. I like that about it. It's fairly firm, so it's not going to flop down. Um, <clears throat> it does come with this covering on both sides, and I think how you take it out is just in fact it has a little catch right there on the inside. Pull it out on the sides here. So this looks like it's reusable. This has a little lever inside. Hopefully this will come out in the camera here, right here. Right here. Push down, and that releases a tab. I'll show it there. It kind of pulls that tab out so you can pull the shield out. Okay. And then there's this protective covering on both sides. It's kind of a clear one, but it looks like it's just going to come off easier if you take the, oh yeah, look at that, look how nice and clean that is. So I don't know if this is replaceable, i got to find out. Um, that would be nice if it was. There we go. Looks like those just kind of slide in like this, so we're going to put those in just like that. snap and we'll pop this in the bottom down here. That didn't quite engage there. There it did. Okay. Good deal. You know, came with some distractions. How to take the window, how to take the shield out how to change the oil, where you find the dipstick, what the tire pressure is, all that stuff's in here. Okay, good. Replacement parts, okay. So maybe you can find the parts online. Yeah? Okay, well that's cool for a $20 thing. I mean, if it breaks. Okay, so here's the safety glasses I bought from Jackson Safety. These, well, these came off Amazon. I didn't buy them from the company directly. It's 12 pairs and um, I thought, you know, I'll buy a couple of nice pairs, but I just, I keep these laying around everywhere, so I, have, I really leave myself no excuse. I've still got three, four pairs in here, and uh, so that leaves me really no excuse.
to not use these. And you can see, I mean, they they get used and they get scratched and you set them down and then you kick them around or whatever, or you get welding uh, sparks or uh, grinding sparks or welding splatter on them. So yeah, um, but they work well. And right now on Amazon, that's what they come up for, 40 bucks for 12. I don't know. They all come with lanyards, so you know, so you can wear them around your neck. I like them. Okay, so the next question is, do you wear these under this? Now, a lot of people wear these under their welding helmet. I've been doing that, and I'm trying to make a habit out of it, keeping one of these on the on the welders so that I pick them up when I put them in, put my helmet on. I put these underneath. I've had slag um, when I'm arc welding bounce around inside my helmet and hit me in the face, and I was like, crap, that could have been my eye. That could have gone right in my eye. Um, and slag's obviously super hot, right? Um, less trouble than with sparks. One day I was laying on my side, welding under a trailer, arc welding under a trailer, and a piece of slag bounced under my helmet and it went inside my ear canal. And I like totally spazzed and freaked. I threw the torch and I flipped over and I was banging my head, slapping my head with the side of my hand, trying to get the hot thing out of my ear. That could have melted through my eardrum. So, you know, the welding caps that go over your ears, yes. Uh, goggles inside your welding helmet, yes. Do you should wear it inside this when you're grinding? Um, is this ballistic? No. Is it going to keep you from sparks? Yes. Um, uh, but is it going to keep you from a cutting disc like this? That's spinning at what does this grinder spin at? Sorry, 12,000 RPM. And most of these grinder discs are rated for like 12,5 or 13,000 uh, 13, RPM, or these cutting discs rather. And so that's freaking fast, and that can cause damage just immediately if that wheel comes apart. Now, when I was, if you watched my um, video on my incinerator build, one of these came apart right at the very end, and it's all jacked. And that was my last cut. I was just pulling it out, and it came apart. And I don't remember it hitting me in the face or anything, but when I, I set the grinder down, I came up later, I was like, wow, that thing came apart right at the very end. It just destroyed itself. So pieces went flying everywhere. I didn't get hit by them, amazingly. Um, I have used this, and is that safe? No, there's no guard on it. Uh, is it safe in one hand? Maybe. Um, but I have raked the crud out of my skin and just got like a third degree burn when this bounced off something that I was holding and it slipped and went across my wrist right there. Fortunately, it didn't damage any vessels or any tendons or anything. Um, but that's this is just how I roll. I like having a brush, you know, a grinder disc, a cutoff wheel, and a flat disc, and uh, all on different grinders. So I can just grab one grinder, plug it in, and do what I need to do. And it's nice. This whole Harbor Freight beater I've had for lots and lots of years. I've actually replaced the cord on it. But these are these old style, and of course, no guard on this. This is dangerous too, right? Um, safer here. And uh, safer here, just because if it does come apart, it won't less chance of that stuff coming back and hitting me. But this, my hand could slip forward; it could literally cut my finger off. And uh, this probably isn't going to cut my finger off before I drop it. A couple of problems I've had with these style grinders, though, and why you want to buy one with a paddle like this that has a safety on it, is if you drop it or drag it across the ground like that, it's not going to depress the switch and turn it on. Okay? So this one multiple times, and this one multiple times. I set down, you know, it's still spinning, and maybe I just set it upside down as it's winding down and just set it down and go about my work as it spins, and it winds down and stops. But then I'll trip on it, or I'll hit the cord with my foot, and guess what? Click, it drags across the ground and turns the switch on. And then now this is running and it falls over, and then it starts, it flies across the concrete the driveway or by, inside of my garage. Um, my buddy was telling me he knew of a guy that um, somehow his grinder turned on while I was on the ground. I don't remember if it was dropped or not. I don't remember what he said, but it scooted across the floor and spun around and hit him in his Achilles, cut his Achilles tendon, cut him in the back of the leg. So should you wear boots? I don't know. Should you wear medieval armor? Probably. So um, obviously this is super dangerous too because that cuts right through steel. Same thing with this grinder though. Um, I drug this one or I bumped it. You know, I tripped on the cord and it slipped, it caught on something and turned on. And then sometimes it just turns on and sits there, but sometimes it falls over and then it's a rocket and it just shoots across the floor and runs into stuff. And that's pretty dangerous. So just a few uh, things that I've had to deal with with grinders. 
Um, hope this helps you guys. I'm going to go try this out. I'm going to do a little bit of welding today and try it out. Um, I'll be doing some grinding on some rebar, just some, weld, just some real minor stuff. And, uh, but I want to try it out and just uh, see how it feels, and, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, also, this is going to be a backup for the weed eater. Um, and I typically just wear these for weed eating, but, you know, the weed eater spins pretty dang fast, too. The gas-powered one can, I've been hit in the face many times with things like, ow, that hurt. That really hurt with rocks and sticks and whatever it kicks up. Those have always protected my eyes, but that would protect my whole face. So that would be nice. And I think this switch is a good compromise of a paddle switch or a switch on the back. Um, if, if the handle is on this side, most likely this is not going to catch on anything if the handle's off. Well, it still could. It still hits the ground right there. I guess it still could turn on. But you really have to press it down and push it forward. That takes a lot of force. Probably not going to happen as easily as those old switches on those old grinders. And honestly, I like this DeWalt because it's high amp. Um, and the high amps are nice because it will cut. It doesn't bog down. But let me tell you something. This one is no load speed 11,000 RPM. I didn't say how many amps it is. But it's not very many amps. Just like this one isn't very many amps either. Four and a half amps. If I hit my hand with this or my jacket or my glove and it starts to wind my glove up while it's on, this one's going it to, it bogs out. Um, this one bogs out pretty easily because it's just not that many amps. This one, I don't remember how many amps this one is. This one, six amps. This one's not as strong as this DeWalt, which is eight amps or something. Nine amps. So this one doesn't bog out at all. If you get a brush, if you have a brush on this and you wind it up in your glove, it's going to do some damage just because it's so powerful. So everybody wants the most powerful grinder and all that, but there's some advantages to having a grinder that's, you know, I just need to brush some steel off or brush some rust off with this. That's what I use it for. And three, four, five amps is fine, whatever, you know, something low. This is four and a half amps, and it's fine for just knocking stuff off. It doesn't have to be the most powerful and the most expensive. I mean, these are 20 bucks now. Um, Harbor Freight, these things are super cheap. Um, that's a northern tool one. So I've had this one for since the early 2000s, and this one probably about the same. Um, this one just for two or three years, and this one probably for four years. So I'm just saying they last a long time if you have a grinder disc on each one, and that's kind of nice because then you're not ch always changing parts and changing um, cutting wheels and whatever. And some of the lower amp ones, they are cheaper, they are less expensive, but this one's lasted so long, I mean, I'm just going to probably buy another $20 one to replace it when it goes out. And you can see how bad it is. Even the little chuck, or the little uh, arbor lock right there is gone. The handles are long gone. Of course, the guard's long gone, too, so it's not really that safe. And I should update these, or at least put guards on them. So, um, but that lower amperage has been nice. It's probably saved me a few times when it's gotten caught on my jacket or caught on a glove or something. here, touching this here, and just hearing that tap, tap, click, click before I pull the trigger. Now, um, just a week ago when I was welding on that incinerator, I had my safety glasses on and off 50 times, I bet, and I don't, I'm not even sure why I was taking them off. I should have just left them on and kept them on, but I was taking them off for a couple different reasons, I guess. I don't even know what they were. Um, maybe I went inside or whatever, but I came back and I was grinding or cutting, and I think I was grinding, and I kept feeling little sparks hit me on the face, and I was like, 
well, my, I have my safety glasses on. I didn't. And all of a sudden, one hit my eyelid, and I was like, whoa, I don't have them on. And I touched, and there was nothing there. I could have lost my eye. I mean, that could have been bad, especially if the grinder just get blown up. And um, so I'm just trying to develop that habit. If you guys have some other ideas of what reminds you to put your safety glasses on before you uh, put your grinder, maybe some people put them on top of their grinder. But if you have four grinders, do you put four safety glasses on? Maybe. It might be worth your vision. So.